Buying a new phone can be tough. And well, that's why I'm here to help you. Hey guys, I'm Otto here from C4E Tech, and these are my recommendations for the best phones that you can buy right now. So if you do end up finding this video informative, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. Now for the purposes of this video, we are going to be focusing on phones that are available in the market right now. So some devices like the OnePlus Nord at 25K, since it's not available, has been excluded from this list. After all, this video is meant to help you if you're looking to buy the best phone that's available right now. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin with the under 10K segment. There's quite a few phones to choose from in here, but the one I'm going with seems to be one of the most well-rounded, the Redmi 9 Prime. This recent launch from Redmi comes with a full HD plus screen, something that we rarely see in the under 10,000 rupee segment, a powerful MediaTek G80 processor and quad rear cameras. Now, if you have a bit more money to spend and are looking for a phone in the under 15,000 rupee price point, my choice would be the Realme 6i. Now, the Indian variant of the Realme 6i is actually an upgrade over the already quite good Realme 6. It improves the screen brightness while keeping the 90Hz refresh rate, is still powered by the powerful MediaTek G90T chipset, has the same 4300mAh battery and even retains the 30W fast charging capability. The primary camera has suffered a downgrade on paper from 64 to 48 megapixel, but as we showed in our unboxing, it tends to perform better than before. At just 13,000 rupees, the Realme 6i is worth every penny. Next up, we have the Poco X2. At 17,499 rupees, the Poco X2 offers a 120Hz refresh rate, the Snapdragon 730G processor, and most importantly, an improved primary camera that comes with the latest 64MP IMX686 sensor from Sony. It also boasts of a dual front camera setup with a 20 plus 2 megapixel selfie setup embedded in the pill shaped cutout of its 6.7 inch IPS display. It also gets a slightly higher 4500 mAh capacity battery. Now technically this position should have gone to the Redmi K20, but right now it's available at 22K for the 664GB variant. So if you want a full screen AMOLED experience and don't mind the added price, then this is the phone to go for. Moving on then to the 25K segment, we have the Realme X3. Armed with a Snapdragon 855 Plus processor, a full set of quad cameras that includes a 64 megapixel primary, an 8 megapixel ultrawide, a 12 megapixel telephoto, and finally a 2 megapixel macro sensor, and a 120Hz 6.6 inch IPS display, this is one device that has kind of slipped under the radar, thanks to the presence of its big brother, the Realme X3 Super Zoom. Nevertheless, if you are under a strict budget of 25,000 rupees, the Realme X3 is worth looking into. If you have the budget though, then spending around 30,000 would net you last year's flagship from Realme, the X2 Pro. Now the X2 Pro is one heck of a device since it not just comes with top of the line internals, but it's also got an excellent 6.5 inch AMOLED panel that runs at 90 hertz. We also get the 50 watt SuperVOOC flash charge that can get the 4000 mAh unit inside the phone from 0 to 100 within 35 minutes. The optics aren't too shabby either with a 64 megapixel primary, a 13 megapixel ultrawide, an 8 megapixel telephoto and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Last year's OnePlus 70 is also deserving of this spot, but unfortunately at the time of making this video, we couldn't find the base variant of the device in stock anywhere. What's in stock though is the 8256GB of the OnePlus 7T, but that costs a hefty 36,000 rupees. For the price, we get much of what we had already seen with the Realme X2 Pro, a notched 90Hz AMOLED screen, Snapdragon 855+, Plus, a smaller 3800mAh battery with warp charge 30T, and improved optics. We have a 48 megapixel primary camera here with optical image stabilization, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel telephoto. We also get Oxygen OS on board, which, if you ask me, is the best custom Android skin out there. Spending a bit more, around 38,000 rupees, nets us the iQ3. It's a beast of a gaming phone powered by the Snapdragon 865, but it does miss out on the high refresh rate train. The 6.44 inch AMOLED panel does look great though, and if you're a mobile gamer who can look past the refresh rate, the iQ3 may be one of the best devices out there. And with that, we are now into the 40,000 rupee range. 
and once more, this is OnePlus territory. The OnePlus 8 starts at 42,000 rupees and brings with it the Snapdragon 865 processor, 5G capabilities, a 90Hz AMOLED panel that now sports a punch hole instead of a notch, a 4300mAh battery, and of course, Warp Charge 30T. Oxygen OS once more is the star of the show, and for the price, the cameras are pretty decent as well. Of course, if you want a smaller device, then the iPhone SE 2020 comes into play. For all its flaws like the abysmal battery life, a single camera that lacks even a night mode, a small screen with chunky bezels, the iPhone SE 2020 does come with Apple's latest and greatest, the A13 Bionic. And this is guaranteed support and regular system upgrades for way longer than any other Android device that I've mentioned before in this list. Jumping straight then to the 50,000 rupee price point, we have the ASUS ROG Phone 3. This is what peak Android performance looks like. A 144Hz screen, Snapdragon 865 Plus processor, ear triggers, a whole ecosystem of gaming and productivity faced accessories, and a whole lot more. This, according to me, is the best gaming phone out there right now. But even if you aren't a gamer, at 50,000 rupee, the ROG Phone 3 ticks most of the flagship boxes while costing a whole lot less than other traditional flagships. Which then leads us to a final tier. If money is no object, then we have the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. It packs in all the goodies that Samsung has to offer. But honestly, if I were to drop down that much cash on a new phone, I'd probably wait for the Note 20 Ultra myself. By the way guys, unboxing of that is coming soon, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. On the other hand, we also have the iPhone 11 Pro Max, for those of you who'd prefer iOS over Android. With that, we come to the end of this video. Was your favorite phone included in here, or did we skip over it? Let me know your thoughts about our choices in the comments down below. As always, like, share, subscribe, and oh, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.